Lines. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. And uh, I'm very pleased that our matter of public importance was selected today from the ballot because there's nothing more important uh, to Australian workers and Australian families than the issue of tax. <coughs> And uh, what was confirmed in uh, Senate question time today, when uh, one of the first questions asked of the government was, where's their tax plan? And uh, what we got uh, initially uh, was almost zero response from uh, Senator Brandis. And then on our first supplementary question, we got uh, a lecture on uh, everything but tax. And uh, I think almost by the third supplementary, uh, that lecture continued. But um, Senator Brandis confirmed to not only the Australian Labor Party, but to all Australians that uh, when it comes to tax and tax policy, uh, the Turnbull government has absolutely nothing to offer. Nothing to offer. And that's because we've seen this uh, putting up of ideas and then we've seen the backbench react and the ideas suddenly uh, coming off the table. It's been nothing more than a disgrace. And uh, we know that initially uh, Mr Abbott talked a big game and who could forget that first budget of the Abbott government which uh, took all Australians by surprise. Uh, many, many of the promises in uh, that uh, the commitments that were made to Australian voters were broken, no cuts to health, no cuts to education, uh, the Gonski ticket that apparently uh, the, the uh, Abbott government then was on uh, with Labor about, all of that uh, absolutely broken, trashed and burned. The, the trust of the Australian people absolutely uh, trashed and burned and the Australian voters treated with um, absolute disrespect. And of course, right from day one, as uh, Liberal governments tend to do, there were big promises about tax cuts. And it was all about tax cuts. And Mr Turnbull, when he uh, uh, necked uh, Mr Abbott for the top job, uh, reiterated his support for that first budget, that harsh budget that uh, the Australian community absolutely are in lockstep about with Labor, that that was a very bad budget. It hurt ordinary working Australians. Um, he signed right up to it. Mr Turnbull, the new Prime Minister, absolutely stood by every single element in that budget. Now, we've seen a bit of backpedalling, but we've not seen anything absolutely <clears throat> wiped off the slate. The $100,000 degrees are still there, and certainly uh, Senator Birmingham, in a radio interview last week, confirmed that, uh, yes, indeed, they still do want to look at, uh, look at those sorts of things. Um, so they're still there. But tax seems to have taken an absolute back seat. It is something we don't hear them talking about anymore. Those big tax cuts that were going to make life easier for Australian families, uh, how we didn't really need uh, that we could have cuts, cuts to various programs because there was just going to be this money flooding in from all of these tax cuts, tax cuts that would benefit uh, Australian families. We've seen nothing. We've seen nothing. And what, what we have seen, um, not, it's not a plan, it's a shambles an absolute shambles, um, is we had a lot of talk about a year ago about the GST, a lot of talk, particularly from uh, Mr Hockey then, who was the Treasurer, and of course he's gone off to take up a plum job uh, in the US, which um, he's, he's our new ambassador, and uh, when he took up that job he said he could, he could stay here and fight and argue with people in his own party in the parliament or he could go off to the US. I mean, what kind of job recommendation is that for someone who says, oh, rather than be abusive to my mates uh, in the LNP, I'll go back to, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go to the US and take the plum job because I'm such a, I'm such a poor negotiator that you put me in charge of uh, our relationship uh, with the US. Like, what a joke, please. That was just a convenient way to get rid of Mr Hockey after, uh, after uh, Mr Abbott had been necked uh, by Mr Turnbull. But that GST was clearly on the table, clearly on the table. Uh, conversations, Mr Morrison talked about it, uh, uh, Senator Cormann talked about it, and indeed Mr Turnbull, the new Prime Minister, talked about uh, a GST. And we had all this talk going on. And of course, Labor has been very clear about the GST. We oppose it. We've oppo we opposed it when it was introduced and we've continued to impose it. And we certainly opposed the 15 per cent 
uh, increase to the GST that the Turnbull government was talking about. And we went out and we campaigned with the Australian public and we let them know that the Turnbull government wanted to put a GST on health, they wanted to put it on food, they wanted to even were looking at putting it on education. And what that would have done to ordinary Australian households and workers was really uh, in, uh, increase the burden that they were already under after that first and second bad uh, Abbott and Turnbull government. So, um, because Labor and the Australian public were in lockstep as being opposed to a GST, the, the, the wonderful Turnbull backbench started to get really nervous because they're the ones really running the show, the backbench, and they're getting nervous about a double D now. You might have heard it in the media this morning. A few of them get a bit nervous about that. Um, but so what happened? Suddenly the GST was off the table, but was it? Because on the day, on the day the Prime Minister called it off the table, um, Senator Cash said everything was under consideration. So who could you believe? So again, a very clear demonstration that the Turnbull government has absolutely no plan at all when it comes to tax. When you have senior people uh, in the government, such as Senator Cash, saying on the very day the Prime Minister says it's off the table, she says everything's on the table. It's all up for consideration. Now we saw that their notes were leaked, and maybe that's the problem. Maybe they're not all on reading the same notes. They're just making it up as they go along. But a very clear demonstration from senior people in the Turnbull government. They've got no idea about the GST. And then we had um, who could forget that appalling uh, National Press Club speech uh, by Mr Morrison just a couple of months ago in the kind of lead up to the um, lead up to the budget where you kind of hint a little bit, but of course he had the GST ripped out from underneath him, so he didn't have much left to discuss. But what he has said on the public record, and so have a number of the Turnbull government members, but particularly the Treasurer has said he's talked about excesses with negative gearing. He's talked about it a number of times, but of course, once again, he's been shut down. So we've never been able to get to the bottom of exactly what Mr Morrison is talking about when he talks about excesses in negative gearing. But it's very clear from those opposite that they want to make it easier to buy your 16th or your 17th property than to enable uh, young Australian families and indeed young uh, Australian workers to buy their first house. Of course, they are looking after their rich mates as usual. And then when we look at um, multinational tax avoidance, a couple of weeks ago in this place, I spelled out very clearly all the partners of Alcoa, all of the partners, uh, Civic and uh, uh, some Japanese companies and so on, paying zero tax in this country while the Turnbull government stood by and allowed uh, seafarers, Australian workers, Australian taxpayers, Australian mums and dads, members of the Australian community, be sacked by companies that aren't paying one cent in tax in this country, not one cent, and they stood by and they thought it was fair game to see Australian jobs uh, go to foreign workers on Australian waters uh, for the princely sum of around two dollars an hour, and that's a disgrace. And we've seen that the Australian, uh, certainly the Turnbull government, certainly does not stand for Australian jobs. And then we saw uh, the dirty deal the Greens did. On, um, on corporate tax. When we had the government who were desperate to kind of do something, that besides not having a tax policy, they thought perhaps they could do something on corporate tax, uh, right at the 11th hour, uh, the Greens, who'd agreed with Labor, who were in lockstep with Labor on uh, reforming uh, corporation tax in this company, again, the Greens, because they've got no idea how to negotiate. They've, they've barely got their L's on when it comes to negotiations, caved in at the 11th hour and did a pathetic deal with the government on tax, a pathetic deal. And we've, seen that, uh, we've seen that again on, uh, on Senate uh, voting changes that they want to bring in, um, cave in. That's, that's what they do. So, so it's very clear that the Turnbull government have no idea when it comes to tax, no plan. We've got the budget now due, well, due sometime in May. We're not sure when the budget's due now. It used to be 
the second Tuesday, but who knows now because they're hinting at something else. Perhaps they'll need their mates, the Greens, to help them out again. Senator no tax Lange, policy. Your time